Evening and evening, Patriots. Hey again, Santa Fox here, the Royal Patriots 2 channel. And a couple stories I wanted to bring to y'all today uh, over here from X and Gateway Pundit. But before I got into all that, I wanted to tell y'all about what I'm doing. Uh, last year, I decided I wanted to help the homeless people. I had a lot of uh, hats and T-shirts and uh, extra lighters that I get every time I buy a carton of cigarettes for my wife. And just little things around the house that we had way too many of. And I figured uh, the homeless people are probably more forgotten than most people around the uh, holidays and so i mean knowing what it's like being homeless, homeless a couple of times in my younger life uh, i know what it's like to do with that and it's not always because we're drug addicts or we're bad people sometimes it's because people are down on their luck there's actually a lot of people in this country right now that are one or two paychecks away from uh living on the streets or living in their car or losing their vehicle and that's just the facts due to this horrible economy but uh last year a friend of mine travis and his wife and his kids and um a couple of us went down to the homeless uh, encampments around downtown here in Waco and uh, just passed out these grab bags full of food, just some, several things that we were able to come up with uh, between the four or five of us. And uh, just spread the wealth a little bit, didn't spend a whole lot of money, uh, but did try to spend a little bit every couple of days I could just buy a few more canned goods and stuff just because I want to make sure these people had at least a, a good meal, a good pair of dry socks and a few things that uh, you really uh, – learn to appreciate being homeless and um this here's a video if you don't know it uh last year i put this video out i actually put out a couple but this is just one of them uh, one of the shorts uh, this is a guy named charles we run into at the gas station uh, looking for the homeless encampments uh by baylor by baylor uh college because uh, we had at that time i think about 20 something bags full of food uh, and clothes and things for these people if you are interested in helping me uh, gather this uh, process, I have a cash app. Um, you just ask me in my comment section. I'll hook you up with my cash app information. Or you're welcome to send money to my house as well. Uh, I take money in the mail, money order, whatever. But I will do this. I will show every penny that I spend and most likely match every penny that comes in if I get anybody doing any kind of donations uh, because I'm planning on putting some money out of my own pocket as well uh just to do as much as we can this year for as many people as we can uh, i'm trying to build this i'm actually putting the word out there to several people and i figured might as well go ahead and tell my channel people on my channel about it too anybody that can afford to help an extra five or ten dollars would make a huge difference in somebody's uh week being able to uh, have a little more during the christmas holidays it'll take me about a month to put this all together uh, but a couple of days before Christmas, like last year, I did this uh, on the 23rd. But uh, a couple of days before Christmas, we'll go around and we'll find these homeless people and uh, in these in encampments and uh, just try to spread the love, share some blessings and uh, show them that they're not forgotten. I met some really interesting people last year and I want to continue to do this every year. As a matter of fact, my friend Travis called me uh, last week and said, are we putting food together this year? Are we getting clothes ready this year? I said, absolutely, absolutely. I said, um, start telling your friends. And uh, so here I am talking to uh, some of my friends here on the Internet and my listeners. Maybe some of you are both. Uh, but um, if you can afford to help, I'm going to do my best to be able to double any dollar amount. It does come in. I'll film this, show the actual receipts of what I paid for, show the merchandise like I did last year on the couch or on the floor in here, all the stuff we get. And then we'll separate it into uh, different bags and then uh, go hunt them down and hopefully be able to film quite a bit of that as well uh, like I did last year. Um, just sharing the love, folks. Now, um, like I said, if you want to get involved with this, just let me know in the comment section below. I'll probably talk about this a couple more times before Christmas, but the sooner the better as far as getting all this stuff lined up because it does take a little bit of time and uh i am working full time now and doing a couple other things as well just trying to just trying to make it but we're going to do it either way folks uh and we're definitely going to help some homeless people one way or another all right let me go ahead i'm going to play this video this is um my video from last year one of the many people i run across was able to uh, share some love with your name my name is charles Wafer. Nice to meet you, Charles. We uh, just tried to hook Charles up with a few things he could use. Uh, gave him some socks, uh, rain slicker, a couple of lighters, a plastic bag in there to keep his uh, personals dry, blanket. 
Uh, just a little bit of clothing items he can use. Everybody can use clean, clean T-shirt, especially when you're out here on these streets. I just want to thank you for uh, being here today, man. I just want to let you know it's uh, it's Christmas time, and we, we don't forget about y'all. And I thank God for y'all putting y'all hostage. Well, for, appreciate you trying to make it out here in this world. Don't give up. You know, I've been homeless twice, and I'm now back on my feet. So, you know what? There is hope out there. You're going to get back on your feet, man. Thank God for y'all. Have a, have a blessed day. Okay. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Christmas. New Year. I give him a bunch of stuff out of here. I done throw him some t-shirts and stuff. Had a couple of them come around through some t-shirts. Whatever you may need, man, whatever you may have to man, just Folks, that was Charles. Like I said, he was just one of many people that was just gracious to have somebody walk up on him and say, here, man, uh, I don't know if you've ate today or not, but here's a meal. Here's some clothing. I know you probably need some clean socks. I know that's one of the things that's cherished when you're out there being homeless. A uh, good pair of shoes and a clean socks and a good jacket, a good blanket, uh, just uh, edible food, be able to carry around with you, just little things like that make all the difference in the world. All right, folks, now I've got a little bit of news I want to get to with you as well. Let me make sure we're all right over here on this thing. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. Let me move my display up a little bit. Now, Cash Patel, who I want to be the FBI director, if not the deputy director, whichever position he needs to be in to do the most good. Uh, but that has been discussed. Hopefully Trump will put him in and he won't have to be confirmed, but most likely he will. And uh, the deep state doesn't, and the Democrats know that, and the rhinos know that he is going to be a headhunter when it comes to uh, taking down these third letter agencies' corruption. Uh, he speaks about it all the time on the Benny Show and several other shows I watch. Cash Patel is one of the great ones, no doubt about it. Uh, but we'll get into it here. I've got a video clip of him with Maria Bartiromo this morning. I listened to it, uh, and uh, I thought it was just really, uh, really excellent uh, piece of information about what's fixing to happen, uh, what's coming, and I'm just glad to hear it. Unfortunately, the public has also lost trust in a number of these agencies. Cash, how do you believe... Uh, Americans will regain trust in our most important law enforcement agencies. One thing, exposure of corruption. Put out the documents, put out the evidence. We only have gotten halfway down the Russia Gate hole. The people need to know that their FBI is restored by knowing full well what they did to unlawfully surveil them. The people need to know that there has been a de-weaponization, a defanging of the Department of Justice and their houses of worship will no longer be raided. But they need to be shown the documents that said this was the reasoning they weaponized justice. And that, in my opinion, is how Congress can most importantly secure the trust or re secure the trust of these agencies and departments. President Trump is taking a huge first step with his monumental victory. Now it's up to Congress and the Senate to work with his leaders at DOJ and FBI to put out those documents. And I think Doge goes a long way in that. But we're going to need cabinet secretaries who say, we don't fear the corruption that preceded us. It will make us powerful if we expose it to the American public. Wow. As Cash Patel warns the FBI and government is fixing to get shrank down to size and cleaned out of their corruption. Uh, they are definitely going to be fighting back. And uh, it made me think a little bit about this video clip here that I've seen, so I want to bring it to y'all as well. This is George Santos explaining um, being a congressman, you get to expose stuff. You get to see stuff behind the scenes like uh, insider trading from Nancy Pelosi and people that are getting rich. A lot of these congress people have been in there half their life and they make a hundred grand a year, but they're worth $300 million. The math just doesn't add up. Uh, it's insider trading, no doubt about it. But um, that's just one of the many things that's involved that's cor corrupt and crooked is a part of the process uh, in, in Washington. And Matt Gates not being a, uh, a congressman anymore, like George Santos, he can now come out and be, be used as a tool, not just to explain what we didn't know from behind the scenes, but to uh, help prosecute it because he has been a very strong activist, activist to stop all this corruption. So he knows directly firsthand uh, who all's involved, the Christopher Rays and the Merrick Garland's and the 
uh, Anthony Blinkins and all the people that uh, he knows where all the bodies are buried, like Cash Patel does. And him not being in Congress at this point is actually going to be a good thing. I have to believe uh, Matt Gates is getting out so he can do uh, more more progressive work toward fixing the problems uh, that Trump has. I hopefully he gets Trump takes him under his wing and uh, puts him in a position that you don't have to be voted in, confirmed, uh, where he can get some stuff done about dismantling the deep state. Uh, he does know who the bad actors are, and I think that is probably a better place for him than to be acting attorney general. Maybe he can be deputy attorney general while uh, continuing to work with Trump in other ways. Who knows, folks, but um, I'm not uh, too stressed out over the Matt Gates not getting his confirmation. Maybe that's the way it's meant to be. But um, this here just kind of explains a good point about once you're in, you don't talk about what goes on on the inside. But once you get out, like Santos and and Matt Gates, look out. Matt Gates is probably going to spill the beans over the next couple of months about some stuff that we had no idea about. And I'm ready. As I, call, as I call her now, I mean, she's insider trading, and it's almost evident if you look at her disclosures. I mean, it, it's not hard to see a but member. How do we prove that? Oh, it's very easy. She receives classified briefings as a member of the Ways and Means Committee. It takes a very comp, competent DOJ, uh, pardon me, FBI officer to go look at her trading and how it works and just look at her communication. It, this is all digitized these days. It's not hard to see a person saying, hey, do this trade. Just got a good tip. She's pushed back on that though yeah well they all push back but can somebody explain to me how is it that she miraculously becomes a member of the committee and then she's doing trades on nycb with the signature bank collapse just the day before having an 80 percent stock hike that's not a lucky trade marcia that's a very well informed trade as i call her now i mean and that's what's going on in washington it's not just the lobbyists paying off everybody but the insider trading that goes on from these uh from these investment groups that uh, that actually with the uh, NASDAQ and everything and the investment groups knowing exactly when to be where. People like Nancy Pelosi know when a defense contract is going to go through because so they know when to buy into anything involved in that particular field. Easy enough. I think maybe I'm going to start following Nancy Pelosi's stock trading tips at this point. I think she has about a 70% rate of making money. Now, this here sounds to me like panic. Now, Adam Schiff does not want uh, Trump's attorney general to be able to investigate anybody uh, for prosecution of the prosecutor. Uh, or pros she don't want the, Adam Schiff doesn't want the Jack Smiths and the, the Big Fanny and all these other district attorneys and, and, uh, and attorney generals that went after Trump. They want them all to just uh, get a pass on their conduct. But as is, Adam Schiff doesn't believe Trump's AG pick, Pam Bondi, should be prosecuting the prosecutors. If she's going to continue to say the Justice Department should be prosecuting the prosecutors who brought valid evidence before the grand jury, a grand jury found a probable cause to believe that Donald Trump committed the crimes, and that's not a basis to go after them. So basically, he's saying, well, Trump was guilty of all these crimes, so they had a right to go attack Trump and go do their thing. Let's listen to it, folks. It sounds like pure panic, if you ask me. Well, Kirk Pencilneck, Adam Schiff. I think, I, I think uh, the president has a right to nominate anyone who's qualified, who has good judgment and good character. Uh, it doesn't mean he's guaranteed to send approval of whoever he nominates, and some of these nominees are deeply problematic. Uh, I'll be interested in the confirmation process. Will Pam Bondi continue to tell the big lie even under oath? Uh, is she going to continue to say that the Justice Department should be prosecuting prosecutors? So the new big lie is the Justice Department is weaponized? Okay. Who brought valid evidence before a grand jury? Grand jury found probable cause to believe Donald Trump committed crimes. That's not a basis to go after them. So... She's going to have to answer tough questions. Tulsi Gabbard concerns me a great deal. Uh, I think uh, the president has a He sounds worried to me, folks. He sounds like he's in full-blown panic. And I cannot wait for this guy to either leave the country 
or get locked up for his heinous crimes. He has lied so much he should be c catching uh, lawsuits from both directions just for uh, what he's done to our country uh, w with his misinformation. Or should I say disinformation, however you want to call it. He's, he's like CNN. He, he purposefully neglects the truth. Now, this here is a crazy video, folks. This is what, it to me, is my impression of what we've been going through for the last four years. A bus ride with this guy driving. I'm so glad I'm not on that bus. <laughs> <laughs> you get it folks that guy's out of his mind and i'd hate to have to be on that bus for too much longer that's the way i feel about our country we're on our last bus ride uh last stop to get off this crazy town bus of uh, being on the biden kamala harris uh i don't even know the right word for it a treacherous campaign that they've been on for the last four years to destroy our country uh, the ride's about over, folks. We've got weeks, not months, and we got a month and a half. We, so we got weeks, not months, uh, before Trump's sworn in January 3rd, as soon as the year starts over. The Senate and the House will be uh, will be sworn in, and we'll get our confirmations done. And just two weeks after that, Trump will be in the House. And I'm so ready for it, folks. Start getting stuff done. He's got the stuff about lined out. He's got about all of his picks lined out. And I'm so happy to hear it. I'm glad to see it. Hopefully this confirmation battle won't be like pulling teeth. We've even heard John Fetterman say that he may uh, vote for some of these uh, picks himself. So he's going to choose with his own mind. He's not going to vote down party lines. He said he doesn't have nothing against uh, Dr. Oz and uh, RFK either. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Now this video here never gets old. Um, let's just play it one more time, folks. I enjoy it that much. Let me fix the screen here. Apologize. Get this down here in the right spot. All right, here we go. NBC News can now project that Donald Trump has won the state of Wisconsin, which means he is the winner of this race and will return to the White House as this country's 47th president. Former President Donald Trump will be our next president. But Donald Trump will become the 47th president of the United States. CNN projects that Donald Trump has been elected president, defeating Vice President Kamala Harris and making a political comeback unlike any in modern American politics. Overnight, CBS projected Donald Trump the winner in Arizona, giving him a complete electoral vote sweep of the seven battleground states. I have no interest in listening to a single Democratic politician ever again. In just 71 days, Donald Trump will be sworn in again as president of the United States. His comeback victory unlike anything we have ever seen in American history. Um, the bottom line is no matter where you looked on the map, Kate Baldwin, no matter where you look, Donald Trump was improving on where he did four years ago. Just take a look at the final results. With Arizona now projected for Trump, he locks in a sweeping victory in every single battleground state. He looks like he's going to be the first Republican to win the popular vote since George W. Bush. He literally goes all the way back to history and breaks history. I think the more relevant question actually is what is wrong with America? Are you okay? I think I'm okay. Tell me what you're thinking. Well, I'm so proud. I, uh... We were prepared for all scenarios. In each one of those scenarios, it was how is Donald Trump going to finagle his way back into uh, the Oval Office? And, and it turned out he used our electoral system as it is designed. And in that moment, I thought, well, I was wrong. <laughs> we'll continue to be wrong. <laughs> Yeah, folks, I enjoyed that. I don't know why I enjoy that so much, but I do like a winning. I like to be on the winning team, and we have been taking it on the chin for four solid years, riding that crazy bus. 
uh, just having to hold on, hold on to the rails and hope for the best, watching our economy uh, go to shit and so many other things, watch our country be poured into uh, by immigrants from every direction. It's uh, illegal immigrants from every direction. It's been a sad situation, but it's about over, folks, so there is hope. I can actually see the light at the end of the tunnel now. Uh, we just got to get through it. I hope everybody prays for Trump, his family, and the safety of everyone around him and, and in his cabinet because uh, the deep state is not going down without a fight. But as his folks, we're winning and we're mounting the troops to take our country back. Like, subscribe, and share to the Patriots. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Over and out.